Hello YouTube friends, Bandana Grandma here, back in my kitchen. We'll be both in the kitchen and in the garden today. I was looking through some things I had and I found a recipe card that belonged to my mom and it says cherry coconut coffee cake. I remember mom making this for church suppers and how good it was. So I'm hoping that mine will turn out as well. Uh, I've I've not made it before, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. This is in her handwriting, so it's very special to me. I'm excited about that, to find this card again. It's always fun to come across loving treasures that bring up memories and have a piece of mom here again. So, cherry coconut coffee cake. I happen to have all the ingredients, so I thought that's what I'll do today. Welcome in anyone who's showing up. Looks like you're starting to come on in. Uh, I should get right started and so there's no delays. I've got things set up. Hopefully I got it all together here. Now this calls for a can of cherry pie filling. I didn't have a can of cherry pie filling, but I had a home, home canned cherries. And they weren't quite as thick as a um, commercial cherry pie filling would have been. So before I went live, oh, my microphone, just a minute. Me and my microphone. Always forgetting my microphone. Is that better? That should be better, right? <laughs> so um, what I did was I took my kind of liquidy cherry pie filling, wasn't quite as thick enough, and I put a little more sugar in it because it wasn't quite as sweet as a commercial brand either. And I added a little cornstarch and um, st stirred it up and cooked it down, and now it's pretty thick, so it should work. All right, and I was supposed to melt down some butter, so I've done that. Let me just... Give this a little nudge here to incorporate it all. all. Right, so we got some melted butter here. All right, I think I'm set to begin. I just want to welcome you all, Darlene, Vicki, Ellie, Bev, Tigger Bouncing. Nice to see you back again at Miracle Farm. A lot of my loyal viewers are here. Thank you for that. Okay, let's get started. Mom, I hope I do you justice here. Uh, you probably won't see the end result because it has to cook for, bake for 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. But I'll try to remember to take photos and um, post them on my Susie Bandana Facebook page or my Bandana Grandma Group Facebook page. So, hello Esther, welcome. Alrighty, so here's my cook down home canned cherries. I think they look thick enough now. I, like I said, I added cornstarch and a little more sugar. So that's what I'm going to use for that. And one thing she didn't say was what size pan to put it in. So in looking over the ingredients, I'm guessing this will be big enough. If not, I may have to take it out of this and put it in something bigger, but as we go along, but here we go. We're going to give it a whirl. Okay, the first thing mom says to do is to put three tablespoons of margarine in the pan. So this is our pan and I'm going to put three tablespoons of my butter into that pan. Now back when mom was raising us, we always ate margarine. You know, it was cheaper. Everybody ate margarine. Everything's better with blue bonnet on it. Fleischmann's margarine, parquet margarine, imperial margarine. We all ate margarine back then. Well, I don't eat margarine anymore. I eat butter. So into my pan, or in this case, what do you call it? Silic silicone? Silicon? I'm going to put three tablespoons of butter. And we're smudging that around to cover the bottom. Okay. So 
So there's that. All right. Next thing. Uh, melt three tablespoons of oleo in the pan. Add the coconut and cherries. So we have a half a cup of flaked coconut. That's going in. I seem to remember this being like a pineapple upside down cake. Now one thing I noticed, she doesn't have any cinnamon in here. And I don't know about you, but I like cinnamon in my coffee cake. So I might add a little cinnamon, just cause. All right, so there's the, mar the butter and the coconut in the pan. And now I'm going to add the cherries. We're just going to put them right on top of the coconut. Now, when I cooked these down, they actually got very thick and they wouldn't have spread. But fortunately, I also canned some cherry syrup when I was doing the cherry. So I just added a little bit of that to the mix and it seemed to bring it out just right. Yep, looks good. All right, we'll spread it out to the edges, almost to the edges. Not quite to the edge. There we go. All right, there's our coconut and our cherries. Okay, mom, what's next? Sift flour, baking powder, and salt. All right, I'm just going to put them in my blender, my uh, mixer here, and let it go around with them. So it was one and a half cups of flour. Uh, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's going in there. So we're just going to let that mix up a little. I probably do better using a whisk. I think I will. I think I'll just whisk. That'd be quicker. A little more efficient I think okay that's done now she wants me to beat the eggs so I'm just going to use my old-fashioned beater Beat them until thick. Oh. Okay, there's some frothy eggs. Hope that's enough. Okay. Gradually add sugar, beating well after each addition. All right, mom, do you mean we add sugar to the eggs like you're creaming it? Or do you mean add it here? Let's see. Stir in melted oleo Add dry ingredients all to okay. I think she means in with the in with the eggs. So I'm gonna put in the sugar. It's one cup of sugar. I will try to remember to put the recipe at the in the show more section in the description. It's getting a little harder now. 
with my gizmo. I think I'm just going to use my whisk and add the rest. Creaming up the sugar and the butter. Okay, I'm too tired to do any more. <laughs> All right, Mom, what's next? Beat the eggs until thick. Gradually add sugar, beating well after each addition. Stir melted oleo. Add ingredients alternating with milk. All right, where did I, did I get the milk out? I don't know if I got the milk out. I don't think I did. Only one quarter cup milk. All right, let me get the milk. Let me get the milk. a little more in a quarter so I won't put it all in. All right, that's about a quarter right there. So, now I'm supposed to mix them all together, alternating. So, beating well after you stir in, add dry ingredients alternating with milk. Beat until smooth. Okay, so back to the mixer. I'm probably supposed to be adding dry to wet, but my bowl size and using the mixer isn't going to allow that. Alternating with the milk. Gotta let it mix until very smooth. Now on the back side of this recipe, it says Mr. Maloney's salad dressing. And I remember Mr. Maloney made great coleslaw and I think this might be more of a thousand. Well, let me look at the ingredients. It, it might not be the coleslaw res, dressing recipe. It might just be a salad dressing. But if she wrote it down, it must have been good. Oops, I got it wet. Susan. Okay, sugar, oil, ketchup, vinegar, Worcestershire, salt, grated onions. What kind of dressing does that sound like? Let me give that a quick scrape with the spatula. Make sure the sides are getting mixed in. That's pretty thick batter. Yeah, pretty thick. 
think better. Now, should I add cinnamon or not? Let me make sure she want more butter in there. I think she might have. Oh yeah, stir in the melted oleo. Duh! I forgot that. I read it twice and I didn't put it in. All right, in you go. Maybe that's why it was so thick. Yep. It's looser now. Now I'm going to rinse this off so I don't make the batter messy when I pour it into the pan. There's a number of steps and a number of ingredients to this, but it wasn't difficult. Mom didn't always cook from scratch. Lots of times she used, you know, box cake mixes and such, so I'm kind of surprised this is kind of a scratch cake. Alrighty, now. Let's see if I can manage to pour this on top. Yeah, I'm not going to do the cinnamon. I'll just do it the way Mom wrote it. It's still thick, but I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, it's heavy. This this bowl is so heavy, it's pulling on my back. If Mick were here, I'd ask him to hold it for me. I've preheated the oven to 350. Let's see if I can spread this out, make it look like it should. I'm trying to keep all the cherry on the underside. It'll probably spread a little as it gets warm in the oven. But now it says on it. Frost with King. So I guess there's a King frosting. I'll have to look that up. I don't know what that is. King frosting. All right, that's going to be good enough. And that's going into the oven and the cake should rise. And then I think I turn it out like a pineapple upside down cake. So, whether it comes out in one piece or we have to eat it in small pieces, it should taste good. Let me clean up my mess here a little bit. Okay, into the 350 oven it goes. Set the timer for 35 minutes just to check it. It said 40 to 45. Okay. It's in and it's baking. Now let's just wait for it to be done. All right, let me clean off my lens. Okay, Brenda, hello. Welcome, Brenda. Glad to see you're here. 
Who did I miss? Homestead Humor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Welcome. Finally caught you live for a change, says Tigger. I'm glad you did. Missy at Shore Homestead. Hello from the shore. Which shore is that, Missy? Is that the eastern shore of Maryland or is that the Outer Banks? Or where are you? Oh, Laura. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Good morning. Here it's afternoon, but good morning to you. Yes, cinnamon. Yeah, I may wish I had done that because I like cinnamon in my coffee cake. But if I think it needs it, I'll do it next time. Suburban Hillbilly, Bandana Grandma, why not make a powdered sugar glaze for the top and add a touch of cinnamon to that? That'd be a good idea, Rebecca. Okay, love that old beater. Yeah, I got that at a flea market type place before. I think I paid eight bucks for it, and it worked pretty good. And it was red to match my kitchen. All right, Donna. Hello, Donna. Welcome. Yep. It was smelling good. Looks like it will be delicious. I hope so. Grady Beckel, hello. White picket fence, hello sky. Looks yummy already. Yeah, I remember it being really good. And you know, I think mom made this up because she wanted to make something else. And the church supper, it wasn't church supper, it was a, a bake sale. That's what it was, a bake sale for the church at the local supermarket. It's funny, I can remember way back when these things. And she was freaking out because she didn't have exactly what she wanted to make this, a certain coffee cake. But she did have coconut and she did have pine or um, cherries, so she just threw it together. And it turned out really good. And everybody who bought it wanted the recipe. 1870s Homestead. Welcome, Rebecca. I love having you here. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Let's see. Do you ever lick the icing off the beater just for the heck of it? Of course I do. <clears throat> Even if it has raw eggs in it. <laughs> for the batter. Yep. Okay, Vicki. Hello, Vicki. Welcome, welcome. Google King Frosting and get King Arthur flower recipe for seven minute frosting over and over. Yeah, I was going to look up King Frosting and see what that was because that's what it says. Right at the very bottom squeezed in it says frost with king. So it must be some kind of King Frosting. And I got this wet, but there's Mr. Maloney's dressing on the back that my mom wrote. I'm s I got to dry that out. My mom's card, I got it wet. I should have put it. I had it in this book. One of my daughters, Mandy, gave me this really cute, oops, I forgot I didn't have everything in folders yet, a little cute recipe file book. I love it. Isn't it cute? And I had it in there to keep it safe, so of course the first time I bring it out I get it messed up. Oh, Susan. Okay. Now it's time for the garden update. Now if you were here last week, I was out front and I was working on that garden. I've got just about all done. It needs to grow and fill in, but we got, my daughter Mandy helped me a lot. She made up a lot of uh, pots that we set out there as well. And my daughter Heidi works for Homestead Gardens and we were able to get a lot of plants from there. So, Fairy Dust, that is a fun name. That, that would, be nice here because sometimes I have kitchen fairies that come and help me in my cooking and cleaning here in my kitchen on Bandana Grandma. Some of you have seen that. I want to have them come back. It's a lot of work to have them here though. So sometimes I think they're saving me work, but for some reason editing those videos takes a week. <laughs> so sometimes it's more work than, than you help me with. Put individual recipe cards in zipper bags. Yeah, that's Duh, I should have done that, especially with something as nice as something I found from my mom. Okay, we're going to walk outside and I'm going to show you the front garden while this is baking. Here we go. Downstairs. Out the front door. You hear the traffic? Okay, now I still have more cleaning up to do because I still got big bags of mulch and uh, potting soil around. 
But first of all, I'm going to show you, flip the camera, and show you that I planted my green stalk planter. That's five tiers, 30 pockets on it, and I love it. I have herbs, I have strawberries, I've got uh, a, a patio tomato in there, I've got a patio pepper in there, I have some um, uh, leafy greens in there, I have a lot of things, 30 different things I can put in there, and I'll be showing you how that grows and um, what successes or failures I have with it, I'm going to give you the the truth on it. Now the green stalk people sent this to me only asking that I include what I do with it in my videos. I can't argue with that. I'd always wanted one and when they offered to send it to me I said yes please please please. So here it is. It It's on, they sent me the little wheelie thing that you can get extra so you can roll it around so I can turn it to make sure everything gets the right amount of sun. And if I need to move it on the porch from place to place. So this is perfect for my little tiny front porch out here to give me a lot of space for growing in this little tiny porch. I think I think Rebecca from 1870s Home uh, Homestead has uh, one of these also. Maybe even more than one. <laughs> yeah, I love this planter. So and you fill the top with water and then it filters all down and waters everything so it's easy when i planted them i watered them individually just to soak them real good but and half those plants i'd left out too long and they were looking pretty sad but this was only a day ago and they're already looking better okay front garden here i am in suburbia there's that house that's being built across the street from us and my daughter Mandy made up a lot of baskets for me. And we both planted a lot of plants down here in the surround garden. So let me go down these couple of steps. I turned over all this earth here and we mulched. We mulched it. Let's see if I can see what you're seeing here. Yeah, I have. I have vinca all around the outside and my goodness got motorcycles out here vinca and uh what's this stuff um can't remember senior moment anyway i got lots of flowers in here and she made up this basket and she made up a bunch of other baskets let me see if i can there she made up that basket and I've also got vinca all around, all on this sidewalk too. If you can see right there, all that vinca going around the outside edge. They'll get big and bushy and pretty. More baskets. My roses came and went. They'll be back. I have to spray them good. They'll come back. I have hosta down there. More baskets there. This pretty big pot here. Over there. I have hardy hibiscus that'll have dinner size dinner plate size flowers on it I've got some herbs in here I've got sage and rosemary and thyme more baskets I got a butterfly bush over there more roses a peony bush over here this is a balloon flower and here again my uh, day lilies are coming out on this side and around the corner on the other side of the porch. That big tree there is a crepe myrtle. And the bushes are dappled willow. And back here, another, another um, pot. Down here I have yet to get rid of the extra stuff we were working with and have to take those peppers out back and plant them. I might just walk up back and show you what I've been doing on the uh, in the backyard in the veggie garden. But the problem is I might lose you because my Wi-Fi doesn't always like me walking around. So let me look at your comments first. Then if I lose you, I at least addressed what you had to say. 
All right, let me turn this around. All righty. Uh, let's see. Northern Grace, welcome. Missy had, uh, Shore Acres has two of the green stalks. That's wonderful. Uh, I do find I need to water the individual layers a bit more on really warm days. Okay, good to know. They were so gracious with me and they said, we want you to tell the good and the bad just as natural as you can. You don't have to make separate videos just as you're using it in your daily uh, gardening, just include it. So they're wonderful people and I understand that they're very accommodating. How about seeing your bandana drawer? <laughs> I have bandana baskets. I've got three of them, I think. I don't know, I must have 50, 60, 70 bandanas, I don't know. I got a lot. <laughs> oh, you're right, it's Rachel. Sorry, Rachel. Brain fart. <laughs> Senior moment. Sorry, Rachel. You're, you're right, it is Rachel. I knew that. Thank you, Rebecca. 1870s Homestead is Rachel. Rachel and Todd. I know that. I hope she's still here and heard me apologize. Okay. I'll be interested to see how much food you can get out of that planter. I was thinking of getting one. Yeah, I've got a lot of herbs in it. I don't know. I've got collards and uh, other leafy greens in there. I see one thing looks like needs to be watered on the back side. I might have missed it. I'll have to get that later. Looks like a lovely garden. Thank you. Melissa. Hello, Melissa. So glad to have you here. Your property looks amazing. Thank you. Um, we worked hard on it yesterday. Every morning I got up I worked four hours and the day before I got up and I worked three hours. That's a lot for me. I was pretty pooped. And Mandy's been working hard. My daughter Mandy, she made all the baskets up for me. She mulched this garden for me and that one. So yeah, and she weeded that one a little for me. So I needed the help and she did. Petunias look, look so nice. Pretty garden. Thank you. Yep, gardens are always a work in progress. Yeah, the pots are great. You just got to stay on top of watering because, of course, they dry out faster than in-ground flowers do. How's your beautiful yarn storage working out? I'm really liking it. I still haven't made the complete video on it, reviewing it, but I'm really liking it. It holds so much yarn. I, I can't believe how much it holds. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to finish up that video. All right, now, hang on. I'm going, yes, thank you for sharing 1870s. Also, Melissa Archbold and her husband have two of my favorite channels. Her husband has Curiosity Incorporated. If uh, Brenda, or is Brenda, let's see, Suburban or Brenda can put up, Allie, anybody, Curiosity Incorporated is the name of her husband's channel. I love that channel. Uh, go check it out. And Melissa's is under her name. Melissa Archbold, A-R-C-H-B-O-L-D. So you can, uh, let's see, ne oh, Nancy, my darling Nancy. Nancy Lyons is a dear personal friend of mine. When we lived in Virginia, if any of you have watched My Faith Journey, I'm real classy with trash cans behind me here. <laughs> Whoop, don't want to get the neighbor in, he wouldn't like that. So um, Nancy, was a dear friend of mine when we lived in Virginia when I was raising our children and they were young and my daughter who is into her 40s now was just starting kindergarten there that's how long it was they was leaving <laughs> and Nancy was such a dear she put us when we moved to Virginia before we got into our house she put us up in her home she was my best friend down there thank you Allie uh, she was always there when I needed her. She actually made clothes for my daughter Mandy to start school with because we were so broke, we didn't have much money to buy anything. 
and Nancy helped me make clothes for Mandy to start school. So Nancy Lyons, I love you and I miss you. And I hope we will see each other again. She's out Midwest somewhere, I think. So yeah, I miss Nancy. I'm always happy to see her on here. And hearing my voice brings back memories because Nancy's from the South and I'm from upstate New York. So we could hear each other's accents. <laughs> All right, hang on, I'm going to take you out back. Out back isn't pretty yet, but I'm working on it. And uh, yes, Brad and Chris, um, Brad does a devotion every morning. He does. Okay, here we go. Hang on. If I lose you, I'll try and get back on, but we'll see how my Wi Fi cooperates. I think it's been all right out here. Last, last week it kept conking out, even out front here. You know what? I got bare feet. My sandals are on the porch. Let me run and get my sandals. I almost ran off with my mic still clipped to me. That would have been funny. Ooh, <laughs> pull me back. All right, I'm unhooking my mic, I'm running up on the porch to get my sandals. Am I still going? Just told me my iPad storage was full. All right, here's my hydrangeas. They're coming out. My hydrangeas. Yesterday, I weeded all around this garden, all around here where my fruit trees are. And these are my stargazer lilies. Stargazer are lilies. I got pink and I got some redder ones here. Okay. Now, start of my veggie garden. It's not pretty, but I'm getting it done. Now, the plastic is because I still have poison ivy trying to grow up that fence. And we're going to try and kill it with black plastic. But here is some of my tomatoes that I started. I weeded, the last two days I weeded all these gardens out by hand and with my action hoe. Here I have spaghetti squash, butternut squash that are going to grow up and over these hoops and more over here. I think I might have a cantaloupe here too. Okay. And this of course here is lamb's ear. It's a good medicinal herb. There's some baby lamb's ear growing out here. And yesterday I planted collards. So there's collards in here. Not sure how well they'll do if it gets too warm. And same with the broccoli. I got some beets. I have these, these are sad looking cabbages. We got them free from the uh, garden store because they were, they didn't look like they were doing well. So I'm hoping to bring them back. And I need to water these tomatoes because since yesterday they are drooping. So, and here's my peach tree. It has lots of peaches on it. We'll see how many I get. See, peach tree. And here's my Asian pear tree with Mr. Owl trying to keep the squirrels away. There's lots of pears on it. Asian pears. Hopefully I'll get some this year. Back here, I have my Montmorency cherry. I picked some of these yesterday. Uh, 
That's my Mount Morency cherry tree. My Bing cherry is here. It did nothing this year. Maybe next year. Now, <clears throat> I had plum tree here and it had some plums growing on it but they didn't last I didn't get any this is an ap apricot now for those who don't know I'm espaliering these into a pickable living fence so I'm growing them along wires and stretching the branches out to have them grow into a fence all right this was my apricot it had tons of apricots on it but they all fell off or disappeared before they got ripe. So I didn't have any luck with that this year. This is my gala apple. And I do have apples. There are apples on this tree. We'll see if I get any. It's kind of hard to be a organic gardener because things happen to your apples. I see spots on them now. But I do have apples, apples there. All right, I'm gonna go back. My husband mowed the lawn yesterday. I'm gonna sit in these chairs, see if I can talk to you there. If the Wi-Fi hangs on. All right. It looks like it's going. Are you still there? Buffering. Hmm. All right. Are we still buffering? Or are we okay now? Whew. Let's see. Nancy's in Georgia. Must be visiting wintering with Michael and family. You have to write me and catch me up because last I knew Michael was not in Georgia. <laughs> so I need to hear about that. I see Allie watches Curiosity. That channel is awesome. Yes, it is. He's got an amazing channel. I wish I could go barefoot outside. Too many thorns and critters in Nevada. Three hours. Hey, Darlene's three hours away from Curiosity. Okay, it came back, good. Yeah, refresh if it's buffering. The lilies are beautiful. Yeah, I wish they lasted year round. You caught them, you caught them at a good time. They're, they're coming out really nice now. I think I'm still buffering a little because as I look at my picture, it seems to be in slow-mo sometimes. Peach tree is looking good this year, keeping ahead of the grasshoppers and Antelope. Good, Vicki. Rebecca says, my hands are covered with big blisters from trying to get my garden done. Can't do what I used to. Oh, golly, I know that. Neither can I. Okay, you are getting there. Like someone said earlier, gardens are a work in progress. Yep. I got so much to do here. I, I do have to cut back. I used to have the garden going all the way up to the end and wrap it around behind the fruit trees. No more. I'm limiting the veggies to peppers and tomatoes and some of the veggies we use a lot. Over here I got a couple of buckets of potatoes. I have more calluses on my hands than most men. <laughs> well, you're a hard work th worker there, Brenda. You're good. Okay, good. It, it still looks like it's buffering some to me because I see freezing and going seconds long, you know. But it's beautiful today. Really pretty out here. So um, we are leaving to go to the Outer Banks next Saturday. And I am so excited. Now I'll have people here to watch the house and take care of the garden so I don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, but we haven't been anywhere in a long time because of all the craziness. And the Outer Banks was closed right down. Now they've opened it up and we'll still be careful. Um, we're, we're 
we're getting a little beach house right on the beach that was offered to us by a friend and we are so blessed by that. Uh, we invited two of our daughters to go with us to stay at the same beach house. I don't think they're going to be able to make it so it might be just Mick and I there but we're going to drive up to another town where our son Jeremy and our daughter Mandy and our son Michael and their families are going to be renting a big house. So we'll be able to get together and it's my, I'll be celebrating my birthday there. So I'm really happy that I get to spend my 70th birthday with family that we don't see too often because my son Michael lives in Massachusetts and uh, his daughter Tatum just graduated. Um, amazing girl and uh, we're, we're doing so well. She's going to college and uh, she has done incredibly well. She's athletic. Uh, she had uh, problems with, um, the words look backward to you, I might say, um, you know what I mean. She had that learning disability and she got special training for that and she excelled and she did wonderfully well in all her classes and she's a go-getter. She, she has to work harder but she is right up there at the top of her class so we are so pleased with her. Yeah, dyslexia, that's the word. Yeah, dyslexia. Thank you. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so Tatum struggled with dyslexia, so it made things difficult for her. But um, she is the hardest working kid I know and uh, is like captain of different teams, basketball and uh, field hockey and um, lacrosse. She's really good in lacrosse and she's only five foot two, so she's a little dynamo. She also has done a whole lot of uh, it says um, extreme sports where they climb things and jump things and swing uh, those programs on TV. Her mom and, and her, they built this actual course going up over the top of their garage and stuff. So she's very, very fit and athletic and does a lot of running and biking. Okay, I'm gushing for our Tatum. We just love our Tatum. So we're very, very excited for her to be going off. And I have another granddaughter who's graduating, a wonderful girl, and she was salutatorian of her class this year. So very exciting. She lives up by Philly. So Aaliyah and Tatum, congratulations. We love you. And we're so impressed with all your accomplishments and uh, are so very thankful to be your grandparents. So yay for them. Uh, it's kind of sad for the kids graduating that they're, a lot of them are not having proper graduation ceremonies, but um, they're doing the best they can and to make things special for them. Yeah. Let's see, that sounds like fun. Hope you'll have a great time, Bandana and Grandma. I think we will. And the house we're going to, it, when you're standing in the big window, it feels like the, the water's running right under the house. It, it's not, but it feels that way when you're standing there. We've been there visiting those folks before. Yeah. Let's see, have to run. Okay, bye Rebecca, friend called. Oh, oh dear, I'm sorry. Your friend had lost somebody, a family member. Buffering every few seconds, oh dear. Yeah, I had raspberry plants, but when my husband cleared the fence and was cleaning up back here, he cut down those ugly weeds that were my raspberry plants. So <laughs> we'll just get some more. That's all right. I appreciate him doing all that work. I want to try potatoes in buckets. Yep. Al Ellie, mine are working out pretty good so far. All right. Well, I'm not going to stay because, you know, every time I do a live stream, I lose subscribers. You know, I'll look at my videos and I'll, you can see how many subscribers you gained on a video or how many you've lost. And it seems like all my lives lose uh, subscribers. And I think it's because of the, of the uh, buffering that happens here. Or it could be because, you know, when you take time to talk and say hello to everybody, read the comments, it slows things down. And some people are impatient with that. So... So I've even considered not doing live streams and just doing the videos again, but I like the live streams because I like to talk one-on-one -on -one with my folks. So everybody have a good day. Thank you, Laura. You have a blessed day too. God love you. Um, I thank you all for being here. It's, it's so beautiful and spending time with you is always a fun thing to do. I'm glad you caught me too, Missy.
Alrighty, see you next time. And for those of you watching on the replay, if I back up a little bit, you're going to see videos popping up here, 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 and here. Go ahead and check those out and see what else I've been up to. God bless you all. Bye-bye.